right. So, um, you just, you know, you gotta, you have got to be, like, NetherRealm Studios, not really smart right now, looking at what's going on with Tekken and just being like, what happened? Like, 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 what happened? What, how did we miss it? I'll tell you how we missed it. Well, I'll tell you how they missed it. Because they thought that they could, uh, they thought they could get a one-up over us. Right? They thought that they could put out a subpar product. In fact, a game that wasn't even supposed to be a Mortal Kombat game. That was supposed to be Injustice 3. And, and this is, this is what we get, man. Like, this is, this is, this is a joke. Right, like this is this is an absolute joke, man. Right, so you, you know you look at this, right? And once you realise that this game was supposed to be Injustice Three, everything falls into place. Everything from the high damage combos, everything from the movements and and flying all around the air and. Characters bouncing all over the place like gummy bears, you know, the fact that characters are literally like, you know, uh, complete, you know, changes. Um, I think uh, General Shao, what well, was he was supposed to be Steppenwolf, you know, like this game, this Mortal Kombat game never should have existed, right? I would have been, I would have much rather waited for them to get Injustice Three out instead but they swapped and did a Mortal Kombat game not because they care but because Mortal Kombat sells more than Justice right there's lots of superhero fatigue we all knew uh, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League was going to tank it's tanking already I don't think the game has actually even probably been released yet and it's already tanking right another realm they look out their windows and all of us we're just looking back like the hell is wrong with you what is wrong with you netherrealm right you've got a game like tekken that has brought out a product that has no microtransactions no chronic grind flawless execution with its online except for the very first day where uh, there was actual like server overload, which they fixed not with a patch. They fixed it on their end Right, we have customization up the wazoo so good that they can actually Like make better ninja looking characters in Tekken 8's customization than Mortal Kombat can Like Mortal Kombat ninjas No, nothing compared to that. You got Raven. There's uh, there's on X. They've got different uh, color palettes of all the different ninjas. Absolutely amazing. Amazing stuff, right? Not to mention all the other creations that people have come up with. I fought like a Wolverine earlier today. You know, just incredible stuff that they've done. Another realm have got to be taken stock. They know that this game is dead. It is dead. It is a hundred percent dead, right? There is zero interest in it anymore. The next character they're bringing out isn't even a Mortal Kombat character. At this point, I would just dump the remaining like the remaining character pass, you know, the combat pack. Just dump it now, and then just just wait and see, right? Now we know that they're probably committed to story mode. We know they're probably committed uh, to like further invasions because now that we know what the invasions are, you can't fix that. How are you going to fix it, right? The only way it would work is if you allow people just to go to the last Mesa to get the seasonal skin that they're after, okay? But the challenge tower is a grind. All the Mesas is a grind. The mastery tracks are a grind. And then to add insult to injury in a AAA game, you add a bloody microtransaction shop that can't even update its contents by its very own timer. You got Tekken 8 coming up, right? Let's come out. 
the only currency that you can earn in game is one currency and that currency is given to you whether you win whether you lose whatever game modes that you're playing you're constantly earning money i've got like what 40 million or something ridiculous like that and it's all spent on either unlocking customization for your characters customization for your avatar stuff for i i think you can buy some stuff for the player customization right it's just and and of course in the gallery as well you can unlock like pictures and stuff with it as well right it's all available okay you just play you earn you spend no currency conversion <coughs> no dragon crystals no premium shop that's it not to mention that I have fought people all over the world now and and I've gone to different regions as well like the different server regions and the net code has been near flawless in my experience I fought people in Europe I fought people in Australia I fought people in the US and I fought people in Japan right that's a pretty good metric and it's been great sometimes you'll notice it might be a little bit slow but nothing compared to the slideshow that I've experienced when I've been playing this game against friends of mine in the Europe or UK region Grand Blue Fantasy versus Rising has better net code than Mortal Kombat 1 and that's not even a triple-a release even though I would consider it consider it a flawless victory in terms of a game uh, just like Tekken 8 Mortal Kombat is just this is ridiculous we're getting crossplay next month is the desync issue just it's only just been fixed right so you can imagine what's going to happen is is that now that we've got all of these different consoles trying to play together you got PC Nintendo Switch PlayStation and Xbox all playing together okay because Tekken 8 only plays with uh, PlayStation and Xbox and PC okay it's a new gen game they didn't bother with old gen they're certainly not putting it on the Switch because, well, uh, it'll probably blow up. Okay? The NetherRealm have got to be having emergency meeting after emergency meeting, sitting there going, how do we salvage this? How do we get people back into our game? Combos aren't content. Okay? It's the interaction between the content. So, when you take away the fatalities, which are boring now, they take too long, Right? Nobody gives a shit about them anymore. Nobody gives a crap about the blood anymore. Okay? Because those are gimmicks. What made Mortal Kombat strong wasn't the gimmicks. What made Mortal Kombat strong was the story and the character development and the world, the universe building that they made for the game. That's what got Mortal Kombat a, a step above other fighting games at the time because it felt like you had this incredible universe that was being crafted for you. Not only that, we also had the, like, one of the few times that we had digitized graphics back then. We had the pit come out, but that was, you know, it was pretty good. But then Mortal Kombat was the first 1v1 fighter to incorporate digitized graphics. It actually felt like you were playing with real people, because you were. And it was amazing. All of these things came together. And then it's like, oh, there's blood. Oh, there's fatalities. But they are only second. The rest of the stuff is first. And when you take that stuff away, when you piss all over that legacy... The fact that Boone constantly, just after every single release, we've got to have a gimmick, and then another gimmick, and then another gimmick, right? And look what's happening with Tekken, right? They have a legacy fan base here. They have a legacy gameplay style here. That whether or not the game had online in previous games is immaterial. The gameplay, somebody that played Tekken 2 can still pick up the game now, and short of learning some new moves and getting used to maybe the speed and things like that, they know how to do throws. They might even know how to do some of the same combinations that have been carried over game after game after game after game after game after 30 years. That's nuts. I think, I think NetherRealm, I, I think they just need to give us the rest of the combat pack and just call it a day. I don't know that they can turn this ship around. And there's a huge amount of code, which I'm going to talk about in another video at some point, within the community, uh, acting like, oh, this is all just rubbish, and, you know, everyone's just, like, bent, you know, like piling on. No. The reason why it's become laser-focused, even though I've been calling this shit out for a long time, 
is because Tekken 8 is really proving 100% and Grand Blue Fantasy vs. Rising that you can put out two fighting games with no microtransactions. Now, Grand Blue has an in-game store, but that in-game store is just a collection of all the stuff that you can only use the in-game currency to buy for. There is no currency conversion with real money. There is no premium stuff. It is all in the game. Same with Tekken 8. Tekken 8 is exactly the same, right? You buy the, you earn the currency, you spend the currency. You earn the currency, you spend the currency. That's it. Easy peasy. And not to mention the fact that the game itself doesn't require a constant online connection. Okay? When the servers went down and I couldn't play people online, I could actually still, this is the funny part, I couldn't connect to people, but I could still get into the Tekken Lounge. I could still play the story. I could still play the character stories. I could play Tekken Ball. I could go into the customization area and do stuff. Any single time that the internet drops out from Mortal Kombat 1, it kicks you out of any mode that you're in. Because, and this is something that I read on X, so shout out to whoever said that, everything that you unlock in MK1, they have designed it to connect to their online server, to unlock it. It dials home to let them know, yes, you've achieved this, now please unlock it for them. On Tekken 8, everything's unlocked locally. You sure, you might have your game save upload to the, the cloud, but everything is unlocked locally. So, if your internet goes out, you can still, you know, you can still use your characters. You can use the customizations that you've unlocked. You can access the DLC characters that you've already paid for. Netherrealm, you're a joke, man. You have no idea what you're doing. Oh, but as long as you tick the, you know, diversity and equity inclusion boxes, you're good, bro. Yeah, those sales don't mean shit, right? What matters is good word of mouth, a great quality product that not only respects its original fan base, but makes it new, uh, welcoming for new people to come in and properly gatekeeps its legacy as well. To say that, listen, if you want to be part of the Tekken universe, then you have to acclimatize to it, not the other way around. And we've been seeing the slow but steady drop off of Mortal Kombat for a very long time. And now here we are at the end of all things, where Mortal Kombat is a laughing stock. The Netherrealm community is a laughing stock because you guys have been flying by on the good name of MK without actually caring about what the product is and what you get in the box. And Tekken comes out and they just put everyone to, to shame, including to some degree with Street Fighter. Your Street Fighter still have microtransactions in their game, right? It's probably the only major negative I could say apart from it had a very small roster. The Tekken 8 kicked off the new year showing how fighting games should be done. I'd like to include Grand Blue in there that, start, that came out at the end of last year in December because it is such an underappreciated anime fighter and because it's also got a free-to-play option as well, it allows anyone to just jump in and try it out. And both of those games, two of them out of the three, like you've got three Japanese developers Two of the Japanese developers don't kowtow to censorship, don't go kowtow to, you know, sort of like the DEI or whatever, and the ESG stuff. They make their game for the fans, and they hope that new people can come in and become new fans as well. Whereas Capcom started to go a little bit funny. And of course, Netherwoke, well, look what they're at. All of it culminates together to a complete and utter disaster that is Mortal Kombat 1. Everything from the name itself, the title name itself, is a massive disrespect to the original game that came out back in the 90s. How dare you do this? How dare you think that you can just scrub away the memory of that great and very, very, not only controversial, but groundbreaking game? Because what? Oh, you just don't like it no more? You know, you're trying to rewrite history? Ed Boon even lied and said that this is a brand new game. Nothing, it's, it's just a brand new universe and it's not. Because we know it's not because Liu Kang is the guy in charge. He is the Liu Kang from the other timeline as confirmed with his interaction with Katana in the story. 
the lies upon lies upon bullshit upon crappy business decisions, terrible gameplay, terrible character, uh, well, sort of, the character design isn't too bad, except they obviously did a lot of things to the women, right? There's this cinematic stupid approach to fatality still, like, just, just stop. You need new advisors. Maybe you should hire actual MK fans, not paying people that only care about combat side of things, and actually ask Mortal Kombat fans what they might want in a Mortal Kombat game. In fact, I'll do you one better. I think it's time for, I think it's time for John Tobias to reclaim the throne and take over as creative lead of Mortal Kombat. Sell Mortal Kombat to John Tobias. Ed Boon can piss off and make his stupid DC games till his heart's content. But it's pretty obvious that as soon as John Tobias left the franchise, what was the first game we got? We got Deadly Alliance. Possibly one of the worst Mortal Kombat games ever created. And that's the reason why Deception was amazing. Because Deception was the apology for what they did in Deadly Alliance. That's the reason why Deception was so amazing. Because they had to, it had to be. They had to correct all the massive amounts of mistakes, as, and then some. And they went all out, and that's why a lot of people love Deception. Now, I don't care for the 3D Tekken-like graphics and gameplay that it had. Tekken's Tekken. Mortal Kombat should have kept on the legacy from the 2D series, and continued that through. And we thought we were getting that with MK9. By and large, we did, but we still had the system of, well, you can do your combos even without touching someone. Now, that might be suitable for other fighting games, but in Mortal Kombat, it wasn't. And most fighting games don't have that. Most fighting games, you do have to touch the other person in order to initiate the actual combo itself. All of these little things just add up over time and create grievances and problems and issues. And then people slowly but surely just break away and they go to other franchises, other fighting game franchises, or just other franchises in general because they're sick and tired of feeling like, like the Netherrealm team are not listening, and then in some parts, the Midway team are not listening to the core fan base. How is it the Tekken do, can do it, or Street Fighter, or Grand Blue, even though it's only new, okay? How come they can do it? How come other gaming companies can do it, especially, particularly the Japanese? How come they can do it, but Mortal Kombat can't, Netherrealm can't? And that's because they don't care anymore about Mortal Kombat. They have been concentrating on the wrong parts of the community. They have been listening to the wrong people in general. And we end up with this hodgepodge of a game, which is an absolute joke. And it's depressing and it's sad as a Mortal Kombat fan to say that. I think it's time that Warner Brothers sells off the franchise. Give it to John Tobias. John Tobias is the only one that could save Mortal Kombat? A hundred percent. A thousand percent. Because he built it. He knows the universe. He knows what made people fall in love with it. And you need to bring that back. Otherwise you have no hope. There is no riding this ship right now. And with the momentum that Tekken has, and any other games that are coming out that is going to take people's attention away, Mortal Kombat is actually being uninstalled. I've seen people's comments on my videos. People have been uninstalling Mortal Kombat in place of adding Tekken 8 to their hard drive and their console. That says something, right? Because normally you could, you know, if you, you know, if you really like something, you'll work around it. But they're literally replacing what should have been one of the greatest fighting games because Mortal Kombat always had that, you know, particular, you know, impact with another great fighting game. And they're not even bothering with MK anymore. There's nothing. What's to come back to? What's to come back? Well, the combos? Well, Tekken's got combos. And Tekken does combos way better than Mortal Kombat could ever dream of doing. So what's left? Oh, it's the characters. What? The bastardization of characters that we have grown up with since the 90s that are now shells of their former self? Sure, they have taken some of these John Tobias storylines, which I'm very curious about whether or not he was actually involved in this or they simply just had the rights to them regardless, because even if they were throwaway, they were still under the Mortal Kombat banner, and they simply just used them because they were there. 
You have to wonder why John Tobias left. You have to wonder that. Because I'll tell you what, it's been apparent ever since Ed Boon was the creative director. That Mortal Kombat has slowly and surely been losing its way. And there is only one person that can save it. And his name is John Tobias.